Warning, central core seals breached, system failure imminent. And that's how you launch an escape pod. Hey guys, Morphologist here, and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you my escape pod system and how you might make your own. But uh, first, let's go to space. Hello there, that was pretty fast, right? Ah, the magic of editing. All right, we're back in space because I need to show you the launch system for the escape pods because an escape pod is only as good as the system that it launches from. To demonstrate this system, I used the Arquintans earlier in the video, and I'm gonna be showing you the modules from this ship separately so I can better show you the anatomy of how it works. Now here's the module by itself. It's pretty simple, and I'll be adding this to the workshop so you guys can copy and paste it in your own ship if that's something you'd like to do. The only thing that this is missing are the blast doors above it to protect the pod before it launches like shown here on the Arquintans. I would highly recommend that you install these above your launch pod when you put it on your own ship, as it's gonna prevent the pod from being destroyed before you even escape. All right, so let's break down the side of this so that we can see how the pod is situated inside of the launch bay and what makes up the launch system. Right here, you'll notice that there's a sensor directly adjacent to the pod and the pod is connected to a very important connector. Now this is a big deal because the connector is going to allow the pod to move with the ship when it jumps into hyperspace and re-emerges on the other end. It also allows you to supply your pods with necessary survival materials in the event of having to use them. Pretty nifty trick, right? Not as important, but I would think equally as valuable here is the sensor. In my system, I use it to detect whether or not the escape pod has been launched. This is important for performing a number of actions and allowing the rest of the ship to know, including the captain, if all escape pods are present. Also nifty if you would like to do something like script a system that actually presently shows you on LCD screens uh, when pods are being launched. But in this case, what my sensor is doing is actually turning on this red light and closing the doors. I thought this might be a great way to signify that the pod was no longer present. That way people trying to escape via the escape pods wouldn't run to a door where there wasn't a pod there ready for them. Anyway, just a little bit of a convenience thing rather than a, a functional thing. Since I'm sure some of you are curious about how exactly I set that up, I'll show you quickly the sensor's settings so that you can replicate this on your own ship. First thing are the actions, which are pretty clear. It's turning on the lights and closing the doors. To get the sensor to pick up on the pod, though, you're going to have to change a few settings. Namely, reducing all of the extents of its detection except for the front, down to 2 meters. This way it's only detecting what's in the bay for the pod and not anything else. 
Also important are what it detects, so you want to make sure that it's detecting owner and detecting small ships. But this is actually a two-part system, and in order to understand it, we need now to explore the pods. So for the sake of clarity, I've taken the liberty of stripping down one of my pods and putting it adjacent to the full built up pod so that you can see all of the important modules that are hidden within. The important thing to note is the philosophy behind it. That's minimalism. There's only two thrusters on the bottom that direct it where to go, and all of the systems are very densely packed together. This reduces the overall size, as I wanted to keep it down to the size of a large block inside of a ship. So now let's explore the anatomy of my escape pod. The landing gear on the back allows the escape pod to land stably once coming in contact with the surface. On the front of the escape pod is a small container containing all of the things you might need to survive on a planet's surface or on a rocky moon, on top of which is a button that activates the launch sequence for the pod. Inside of the pod is a passenger seat, which reduces weight and cost, and allows me to see a number of LCD panel readouts, which give me my altitude, the number of things inside of my cargo, and the amount of energy remaining from my battery. In case you're curious, the script that's running is by M Master, and it's an LCD readout script I'll have in the description of the video. On the back of the pod is a beacon and another one of the three timer blocks required for the launch system to work, which we'll go into in a second. Moving to the top of the pod, over the battery power supply, you'll notice that there's a gyroscope, a remote control block, and a new block called a parachute block. The gyroscope allows me to steer the pod once it's been launched while the remote control block allows me to actually control it from the passenger seat, and the parachute block allows me to slow the pod down once I've reached atmosphere on a planet. Now that you have a basic understanding of the modules attached to the pod, let's go into what happens when you press the launch activation button on the front of the pod. When you press it, it actually activates a timer block immediately. This timer block activates the second timer block in the chain, turns on the lights, and turns on the gyroscope to prime it for launch. The second timer block though is activated on a timer instead of immediately. That way you have enough time to get into the pod before the launch sequence concludes. Once the timer expires, this is where the magic happens. This is where the pod actually begins to launch. So it turns on the beacon, which just allows people to know where you are. You can turn that off just in case you don't want to be shot, say in a military setting. But more importantly, it unlocks the connector and then turns it off. If you don't set it to turn the connector off, it will not be able to launch because of the magnetism associated with the connector. Basically, it'll just stay in place and never leave the ship. The last and most important thing it does, though, is turn on the thruster override for one of the two ion thrusters attached to the bottom so that it can propel the pod out of the launch bay and hopefully into safety. The only thing left to do afterward is to take control of the pod via the remote control device inside of the passenger seat, steer it towards the planet, land it by deploying yourself a nice parachute, and then safely exiting the pod. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this helps you make an escape pod for your own ship so that you might survive your next encounter with those with more nefarious purposes. So if you liked the video, or if you liked me, or if you'd like to see more, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.